Hey guys, welcome to this video. Today I want to show you a little bit about Super Dungeon Maker, which is currently in development. So I want to show you what you can do in the current state of the game. So by that we just hop into the building dungeons basically and we create a new one. And uh, we try to basically go for a tutorial dungeon, something like that. So we have a few items, maybe one or two, which we want to introduce the player who plays the dungeon and to show him, okay, what can this item do and what you should do. So the rooms are kind of connected to the items. This is the plan, the, the, the major plan, what we want to get at the end of this video. So when we start the build mode, we see right away uh, we have two items. So I can, by the way, press P or just click here. So I swap between the, this is the build mode where I can just draw the tiles on the floor and make the room bigger and um, the game mode, which I can move our character Fink uh, down here and play basically the dungeon or the room in this case. So when we start a room or a new dungeon, we create a new one, we have always two items. So the first one is this golden door, which is kind of like the exit of the character, um, of this dungeon basically. So the character can go through or the entrance in this case. So we started over here, but when we run um, through the door, we would actually leave the dungeon again. You can maybe leave the dungeon because you don't want it to be here or it was too hard or whatever. So this is kind of like the case. The other item though, which is over here, is the golden egg. So this is the finish line. So people want to actually find this item and if they do, the dungeon is over. So we want to put this item at the end of our dungeon. So the player needs to go through all the rooms we want to show, right? So we can zoom out a little bit um, to have a better view basically we want to do stuff so for now i just put you over here so we just want to build our rooms maybe to get there um so by doing that i go to the tiles which i already had and i can draw of them if i hold right click i get a razor tool so i can just erase the tiles and the walls will just adjust and get smaller and um for now for this thing i think i like this size already so we will put over here um, the doors and get the next room. I think I get for the next room this, this purple tiles for the floor. Um, I call them corruption tiles because they, they, they look corrupted, right? I, I kind of like have this, this theme always in my head when I build these dungeons, for example. I want to have a little story or something like that. Uh, running so this is basically the corruption which is taking over this nature like dungeon so we just kind of work with those to uh, to achieve something so for now i think i will also want to play stuff like here so the corruption is basically is teased through this entrance and maybe it's spreading a little bit and um talking about teasing actually we can go to the play mode so right now in the play mode, we can see that um, I'm in this room and if I just transition to the next room, I only see this room, right? But um, if I'm here, I can only see the door and I don't see what the next room is about. We can also achieve though, uh, we can achieve that you can see what is in the other room. And by doing that, we just need to make the walls a little bit thinner. Um, so everything connects. So right now, as you can see, we have one giant um, red room, basically. And when I just erase it again, just to show you, we have two different ones. So by doing that now, the rooms are connected to each other so we can see them. But not all of it, but tease a little bit of it. So right now, uh, I'm in the first room, but I can see a little bit already what is in the next one. And if I walk through the door and standing in the middle, I actually see everything. So you want to kind of like take that idea and make it that way. So you make also this room a little bit more bigger, maybe even three tiles um, on, on these little things. And um, one more, so, so split a little bit. So if I raise, as I said, one of the um, tiles on the floor, I get walls basically. I can also achieve that by choosing the wall item which now I can draw it, right? 
but um, if I now right click it, I cannot right click this one, so I can not erase it. So that's why I use it the other way around, so I erase basically tiles on the floor, but you can do it whatever you like to do. Um, okay, so for this, I think I go more like this shape, so we make it a little bit more interesting. And what I want to achieve is this room should be empty, kind of like, so no enemies. But in this one, I want the player to fight. And but not fight that hard enemies. So we basically put in the small dudes, uh, which just run to you. And if they hit you, they attack, you get damage, right? And, um, but they can hide. And for having a contrast, we basically put also this two guys. They can basically also damage you if they hit you. They get close, so they're all range melees. And, um, but these guys can hide in the shell. So when you attack them, they hide. And if you attack them again and again, they will not come out. You cannot damage them. So you need to wait till they come out of the shell and then attack them again. So... It's fairly easy, it's not that much to do, but the mass of the enemies can make it a little bit more a challenge. So for actually be sure if it's the way we want to, I go inside and, and see if it's actually that easy by trying it out. You can always do that in the dungeon um, by just swapping between the game mode and the play mode, right? So we can see it is working out. But maybe it's a little bit uh, something missing. So I definitely have an idea what I want to do, which is putting up the grass. So these guys kind of like hide in the grass, what I really like. So if we have a lot of grass around and they go underneath the earth and then basically dive for a second, um, we can't see them, right? And it gets more confusing for the player to uh, see around if there's actually enemies or not. So I like that idea a lot. Yeah, let me do this and this. Um, yeah, I think I like this. Let's make it like this. Okay, we will try it out again. Yeah, so now it's a lot of harder basically to see them. And the player can still just destroy all of the grass, right? There's also a charge attack if you hold down the button. Um, but now it's, it's less like uh, you're doing nothing. So I like that a lot. So we swap again. I think this is already kind of good. So we can put in this room a little bit stuff. But first let me side where we go next so this is the way to the next room i think i just keep on going with this uh corruptionist okay we let it be there first and try out the uh, and go back to the other room so i definitely want to give the player some hearts if he gets damaged a lot in this room so i put a lot of hearts so we have three in total but uh, I think it's good because this is the first room, right? So you can always come back and heal up. And by talking about this room, we will also give in this room um, a little bit of stuff. I think I give it a lot of nature stuff. So I wanted, yeah, I wanted to have a tree. Maybe a little bit of this one. Another tree maybe up here some bushes, little trees, one of these is kind of good and also a little bit of grass. Yeah, like that. Okay. On you. A little light source, maybe? Yeah, I like that too. Okay, so 
Now we have our little room. It's not that empty anymore. And if we go over here, we still need to put stuff in here, right? Um, so in this one, I think I go with this tree truck trunk. Um, because I want to kind of like bring in the feeling that the corruption is, uh, doesn't have this, this flowers, the, the trees, the bushes and stuff like that. There's already grass, so I think this is fine. But I think I only go with three trunks, uh, bigger ones, so kind of like simulating dead trees could be a way. I don't like you. Go away. Um, some fireplaces, which is always good. Yeah, some of you guys. Maybe you go away. And one over here. Yeah, I like that already. Yeah, doing it like this. Okay, so now, even if we, if the player destroys all of the grass, right, we, we have still stuff in the room, so this is important. Because always think about that, don't only design your rooms with the grasses, because the player can always destroy them, right? If they destroy them, your rooms get kind of empty, and we don't want that um, in every room to happen. Okay, for now, I would say we let it be there. And we go to the next tile. So I don't explain this ones. This ones are basically empty tiles. Empty tiles um, are basically for the player like that he can fall. Um, and he can fall and he get damaged and basically he dies but he respawns and he loses health for it. So every time you fall you lose half of a heart and um, basically you can't jump over it. For now you can't. So there's items which we want to show the player that he can maybe do stuff with it, right? So we will design it kind of like that way now. And um, let me see, what is the plan? So I think I go over here. I put here something as well. Maybe have it more like this yeah yeah so make it bigger so we want to show the um the player this new item which is the hook so basically when we go inside again we get the hook now we have it on shift as we can see on top and um we can basically just press shift and in the direction fink uh, is looking the cl uh, player character um he will just shoot a hook out so right now we cannot hook anything so we want to basically change that and show some items one of them is this crystal lever and um with that we also show the Law of things over there. Oh, this is too far. Maybe like this. Maybe we can go here with grass. I like that that, that, that there's this hole so the corruption couldn't spread that much or not that fast at least. I like that idea. So you just better go with that. Um, and here we definitely need one fireplace. So, by doing so, we now show the player, if he comes over here, he got that hooked, right? He cannot do anything right now, but he can try to shoot against uh, this, this crystal level, right? And by doing that, the blue stones go down uh, if he activates it, and then it gets red. So, for now, if he does it, we can now shoot our hook against the fireplace and hook ourselves over. And this is already really good, right? We kind of want that. So, but we need also to move on. So we place this one over here. I think I don't want the room being that big. No, I definitely want it to be bigger. That was too small. Okay. And maybe putting already a door would be kind of good show where the next room is about okay so now we can go back into the play mode 
and see, okay, if we activate that, now he can hooks over and he can hooks over again and now we over, right? And I think I want also to make a coming back basically, so we need to activate this again uh, from this side. So I hook myself between those two things. And um, yes, let me just see. So we need to something over here, which we decide later again. First, we just stay like this. Okay. So let's take Fink, put him down here. Um, we have the golden egg over here. I think we need to put it up more. Seems like the dungeon goes a little bit longer. And, um, okay, for now we did this. So now I kind of like fill the room again a little bit. Put stuff here. Um, maybe I actually even do this. Yeah, I think I like that ball. And we can put definitely a little bit more grass over here. You're already too much. I think I move you up here first. Put one over here. This item can go here. And more grass over there. And what I definitely want is... Making stuff like this up. So basically, what I like to do here is always... Um, Showing the players, I think I don't want that. Um, I want to show the players that, no, you're too much. Uh, you always have basically a way to move and I want to show him where to go, but not in a way like I, uh, I make an arrow and he runs over there. So basically if you come here, you see with the tiles already, it shows me, okay, I kind of like need to go over here and then hook shot, right? And we can do that. Uh, everywhere just taking I could just also make it like this but this is more obvious in my opinion and I maybe don't want that too obvious so I'm deciding to maybe take that away so maybe we also go for a tree step or something like that Yeah, I think I, I think I do it more like here. It was too small. Too far away, let's say it like this. And just grab everything and drag it to the place where we want uh, by having the hand symbol. And if we want to draw, we basically go to the uh, brush symbol and then we could just draw stuff right and erase it as well um we can also delete stuff by if we have the hand symbol by right clicking it just right clicking just deletes it basically and um yes so we have it now like this i think i like that uh we need to fill a little bit more stuff here um yeah maybe more bu bushes 100 percent little tree here Maybe two. Oh. Much? Too much? Too much. Yeah, we do it more like this. Um, okay, now I also want to go with the tiles again, right? So I want to, a little bit at least, show kind of like a way, right? Maybe by doing so, this could be already enough. So I want to make kind of like this, this uh, rooms again, right? I could, I could go fully into it and just make it like, stuff like that, right? So I already get, only with the green, right? I get, I get this movement uh, showing, but I think I don't want that right now. Because we have always to think about that. Um, if I want to go for this kind of style that I say, 
Yes, there is some grass stuff. Um, and there's this corruption, uh, corruption stuff and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I wouldn't go too far maybe with it. Um, yeah, I think this is enough. I think this is good enough. Then I say, okay, we do it that way. Yeah, this is definitely also better. Um, okay, so for now we have our stuff. We could also put a little bit more grass in it because it just looks a little bit more lively. Um, and I like it a little bit more. You're too much. Yeah. I think this is kind of fine. So, and now we can, again, just try out our game mode. See if everything works the way we wanted it to work. Yes. And we can get there and get to the next room. Okay. That's already running pretty smoothly. So, we now have the hook introduced it, and the player kind of like understand what he wants to do. So I definitely want to use also this red ones. So if I have a red one over there, let me grab Fink again, get over here. Um, there is also an interesting way I definitely want to use that. So if you activate the lever and the blue ones go down, now the red one is up, and I cannot move with it, right? And if I activate this again, the red one goes down, but the blue ones are up. So with that, we definitely want um, to experiment, but not in this room. I want the player to come back to the rooms. So he got kind of like this connections and it's not always like one room, you do this thing, what is in the room and then done, you never come back. So you want the dungeon to be alive a little bit. So the player thinks, where was I? What did I do? And I maybe did something in the room before, and now something in the other room changed. And I kind of like want to show that now. Doing so... Um, okay, let me think. I think we want to... I think we want to have a more bigger room, 100%. Doing so first. Not that big. More like a long room, right? Um... I get over here and then I want to pass over there. Already too much. Maybe something like here. Yeah. And um I have to think. I think I, I would make it more more bigger that way. And place it over here more interesting and now we want the player to kind of like use the hook shot again right but without telling him now there's only this one way use it uh, anything else is not working we want to make a bigger room which is not screaming that which is basically not telling the player you have to do that otherwise you can't go on we want the player to get the feeling that he found the right way or this way works and maybe try out other ways until he understands oh maybe i cannot go here i think i like that and in this room i definitely want to use some of the spike traps so i i think i do it this way maybe no this way 100 percent. and um so here we want to have two rooms one should go up so ways to go basically and one should go this way like here and maybe actually even you can delete always the doors and stuff um you can also right click them so i think i do a locks room over here so i could also just right click it now it's gone um but i think i do it this way and for here, we just decide later. I think this is the room where we want to end everything. Where's our egg? Just grab the egg. But this is where we want the player to get, right? So here he wins. Here's the here's the thing over. So now let's delete this. So we can zoom out a little bit already and see where are you and what did me. Okay, I like that. Going back here. Um... So, we started to design this way. Um, I think I want... 
less spikes in the beginning, more over here, and here I will put down the red ones, which we already saw. Never mind, a bit more here. Okay. Some blues get over here. This way I like it. Okay. So what we basically try to do right now is the player shouldn't be able to get to the egg right away. He should go to the top right, uh, to the top uh, room first before he advance to this one. So we have a key. We could just simply say the key is over there, right? But I, again, if I do that, I'd basically tell the player here is a room which is locked. You can see that. It's not like... I have to go and check at the door, so I see it's locked, so I don't go this way, but we don't want to do that, so we just place a key already over here, but we don't want the player to just go around and grab it, so I will, um, yeah, this fits perfectly, I will put this item object over there, so you cannot go there, so we will check this out again, and try to grab Fink, and put him over here, so if we go play mode now, we see already the room, right? So we go over here, door is locked, I cannot get to the item, and if I try to go over here, I just fall and die. Which is perfectly, because we want to introduce the player the jump or the dodge feather. Um, and this we will do in the, in the top thing. So right now the player comes in and sees already multiple ways, two doors, and there's a key and there's a locked door, so I could maybe get there. But if he comes in here, what we will actually do for testing i always um get the items which i had in the previous rooms because for example if i want to have the hook shot right now i need to run this room right to get there but if i want just to test it i just place for myself a hook shot over here so i have the item so if i go over here i can not get in contact somehow with it right so i only have the hook shot so i cannot go over there but if i um have the hook shot. If I went to this room, this thing should be right now like this, right? So it's it's red, they are down, and in this room the reds are up now. So I cannot go uh, go on. So the player needs actually to go back and reminds himself there is this lever, this crystal lever thing. So if I attack it, now it goes up and now the red ones are down. So what we want the player to do is going this way. So if he wants to get here, he cannot go back from here, because he will fall again. And over here as well, and he cannot hook himself, So which is perfectly. So once the player comes over here, the only way is up. But he didn't see that right away, right? So this is what we kind of like want to, to uh, get achieved. So... Let's go back over here and see what we want to do in this room. So in this room, I definitely want him to find the dodge and maybe use the hook again, but this time challenging the player a little bit more. Okay, challenging him by finding the right way to jump over. So we just... Fill everything first with the blanks. I think we need still a bigger room. Something like that, yeah. And um, we can put Fink already here so we can see. It will stand. I'll definitely do this over there. And now I want some fireplaces. So I want him to jump over some places and get around. And maybe one over here. Yeah. And do this. Yeah, this fits as well. We definitely need to have this chest over there. So the player already sees what it does. So we just put this feather inside. Um, actually, I can also show what the feather does. So basically, if you get it, 
you can now, so now it went to shift because we don't have the hook, but if I press shift now, I can dodge. And if I dodge, I can also dodge now uh, over small holes, like here. And I don't fall into it, right? So this is what we want him to get. And um, so we hide it over there. So we make it maybe a little more like an altar. Um, so you can go away. And by doing so, you could also go away. Then we need some other objects to block some waste, like this one. But also up this way out. And maybe like that more even. Maybe like this. Do I like that? No. I think this looks better. So, I also think about getting this one done, but I don't think I like that either way. This is better. Okay, so we did this. So now we just fill stuff. Um, I want some other fireplaces 100% over here. So you start coming in, so you blocked, so you can't go around like this. And just filling in some, some blank tools for now. Um, Maybe mix it up a little bit. I just take um, some of you, some of you, and again you. Yeah, that should do it. So, yes. So we will play now. First we need the hook again. We need to have a mind though. Every hook we place, we need to be able to... Well, a little bit of the sounds. Um, you need to remember to put away the hooks before we just publish the dungeon, right? So otherwise there's a lot of hooks everywhere. So this is the, the idea. So you come over over here inside the room. So you have one way to hook yourself. Then you come over here. You cannot hook yourself anywhere else and this doesn't help you. So you can only hook yourself over there. And from here on you hook over here and then you get to the um, chest where you get now the feather which is now on Q and the way back actually works now just jumping over this hole which is perfectly what I wanted so now the player the, yeah the player from our dungeon notices okay we have to dodge I can dodge over here there's no other way back so I don't need the hook right now uh, or you just fall down like I did and now you can get over here right so if you now didn't uh, activated the lever again it should stay red so if I come back oh jumping over that I cannot pass okay welcome back so we left off basically building up um, this room where we find the feather which is there for us to jump or to dodge roll over the holes and I also just made a little bit more um, stuff into the rooms and I made them a little bit more uh, lively, kind of in a way. And also went down and want now to um, basically go through everything, what, what was in mind and what we actually want to make it. So if we as Fink come over here, we dodge basically by going, uh, we hook ourselves over here, then we hook ourselves there and find at least um, the dodge feather. With that we can go back straight to this room, get over here and then we can pass because these red things are up. So we actually need to go back to this room, hook shot over here to activate the blue ones again so they are up. And then we come back, now the red ones are down and the blue ones are up, we go over here, dodge over here, get the key, dodge back. Uh, by dodge I mean just using the feather to roll and um, then we can uh, finally open the locked door to find the golden egg which is the finish line where we uh, manage to get through this dungeon to the sh uh, through this tutorial dungeon kind of like and um, finishing it up so I went uh, through the dungeon I deleted all of the items which we placed here just to test so this is really important go back and collect everything where it, uh, what you just placed for yourself down here or so just to try out some simple jump puzzles or so and um, 
at the end run it all through. So we just try it out again just to see if everything is like we wanted to before we publish the dungeon so everyone else can play it. So by doing that, I also noticed one thing, which was when I come inside here, um, there is already... Um, oh, you went down here. Okay, I thought they spawning inside. So when I come inside here, I notice there's no way for me to say I want to... Um, let me delete that for a second. So there, there was no way for me to say, yeah, I killed them all. I can just go through, right? But I don't want to do that, um, to just uh, press on and just go through that. So I just place the stone wall, which is over here. Um, stone door, basically, over there. Um, and this item makes it like you have to kill all of the enemies um, before you can uh, go through. So we cannot skip them all. Uh, when they are alive. So this door will never open. This is really important for us. So if we now want to get here and want to shortcut it basically, we can. So we need to kill them. So that's why that's also what I change, which is really important. Now we will try it out just to see if everything is like we want. Are they hiding kind of good? We already don't see them. I don't remember where they all went down. There's one. I killed this one. I think down here is also one. Oh! He got me. Okay, so we can heal up. We lost already, already a little bit of HP. And now we killed him. Now the door is open. So if I would need a little bit more HP now, I could come back and take this. But if I'm fine, I can now move on. So moving on makes us finding the hookshot. So now the player can just try it out. He sees it is, uh, it is on shift. So... Nothing happens until he activates crystal lever, and now we can jump over. And we can jump over again. We destroy all of the grass. You can also put stuff into the grass if you want to, but that is maybe for another video. So we come over here. We cannot go over there, as we can see. And if, even if we try to, we can go back, activate it, then they go down. We come over here, we can never jump over here and get the key so we stopped so we have to on on one way or another get to this room to actually move on and be able to finish this dungeon so we get over here we hit ourselves over there maybe i need to go a little bit more like here okay now i got it okay so we did it and now i can come over here get now my uh, feather which uh, is helping me to dodge over the holes can come back dodge over here i can still not go over there i can also dodge over the um spikes dodge here oh a little bit too early so now we get to this point and dodge it and destroy this then we come back and now we finished Maybe we can put, just for fun, someone is like me, getting hit a lot. Some hearts over here so we can heal up, but we don't actually need that. And that would be the dungeon. Okay. Um, I mean, there's nothing more what I can, what we can just do. We could make it bigger. We can make the, uh, the whole room maybe for later, um, the dungeon a little bit bigger. We could maybe do some hidden... Um, walls over there where you can destroy them and there's more rooms you can move on put the egg uh, again in the next room and just keep on and keep on and um that that is decided to you if you really enjoyed that if you want to try it out yourself um you can do that by downloading the free demo of super dungeon maker on steam right now and you could wishlist the game so you get notified when the game launches later this year uh, I thank you very much for watching. I hope uh, that was kind of entertaining and you learned a little bit. And maybe I see you soon. Thank you.